Welcome to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Joyous conversations about what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about our one reality. You have nothing to fear. You are eternal and you are perfectly loved. Knowing the truth changes everything. Now, here's Roberta. Welcome to Seek Reality. I'm Roberta Grimes and I'm so happy you're with us today. Our dear, very long-time listeners know that there are some Seek Reality guests who have been with us many times because their messages and sometimes their amazing skills really resonate with our listeners. And our guest today is one of those special guests. Peter Wright is a very longtime friend of mine over the past mm, almost 20 years or so. I first met him when I was in California on a speaking tour, and he's just so naturally delightful that he invited me to come right back to his studio in Santa Barbara for a hypnotic regression session of my own, which, of course, my Thomas would have none of, because Peter and I became... Well, friends anyway, and Peter tried to find some way to get around Thomas's objections, which didn't work very well. But frankly, Peter is so very good at what he does that immediately I wanted him to be my guest actually several times on Seek Reality. And in fact, all the guests we've had on Seek Reality who had Peter actually work with them, have become his big fans. So we've had Peter back repeatedly. In fact, I think this is his 19th time working with us on Seek Reality. At first, I thought of Peter primarily as a past life regression therapist, but he does all kinds of things. He's a certified hypnotherapist. Actually, he's based in Santa Barbara, which makes him, it's nice to visit him there anyway, because it's such a beautiful place. Although not maybe right at the moment, it's kind of rainy there right now. But he's been over, I think he's been working at this for more than 25 years. And he's had in excess of 2,000 clients, maybe more than that, Peter, at this point. How many have you had now? About about 2,000. Yeah, wow. He holds the distinction of being one of only 40 board-certified past life regression therapists in the United States. And each of the 18 times we've had him here before, he's talked about something somewhat different. There are so many different kinds of things you can do with past life regression therapy to help people, which makes it kind of an exciting thing to talk about each time he's here. I can't wait to hear what he's going to talk about today. So this is going to be fun and exciting. Peter, welcome. I'm so glad to have you back with us. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to be here. So let's hear what you have to talk about now. Well, I'd like to share with you a client session from several months ago, because it's one that surprised me as it all unfolded. I thought that the viewers and listeners would be interested in in not only seeing how I work with clients, but also seeing the ways that we go about to help the client uh, release what no longer serves them with the assistance of their heart, their higher self, and all the guidance available to them up in the fifth dimension. Now, this is something, someone had come to you with a problem, right? That's typically what happens. Right. Mm -hmm. Would it help us to know what the problem was? And so with this particular client, let's say his name is Robert. Um, Robert. A former attorney who's Jewish, and he described himself as very analytical during our our free consultation. And he told me they never actually believed in the afterlife and that he had no belief in God. Um, so the presenting issues that he shared with me were he's 81 years old and is very much aware of his mortality. Since he did not believe in God, he wanted proof that his soul will continue after he physically dies. Okay, that's interesting. So how could you... Not believe in God, but believe your soul might continue anyway. We didn't get into that. We instead just said, okay, that's his belief. So let's find out how we can help him uh, perhaps shift or change that belief by connecting with those um, from the light. Okay. Also, he'd hope to find out why growing up he'd had such a terrible relationship with his parents, especially with his dad. Oh, poor guy. 
Now, both parents had died long before. In addition, Robert was curious about a dream that he'd had numerous times. In this dream, he was trying to get home or get someplace. And he quoted to me, I'm lost and I can't find my way and people won't help me. So during the session, Robert wanted to release the childhood trauma from his dad and find out if his soul will continue after he physically dies. So those were our, our, our major issues as we went into the session. Okay. Now, from my perspective, I was intrigued because I have a very, as you well know, metaphysical hypnotherapy practice. So during a session, I show my, I show my client how to channel his heart, his higher self, and all his guidance available to us from the light. Right. This includes spirit guides, angels, archangels, and ascended masters. Did he believe in these these beings? Did he thought? Yes, indeed. Didn't believe in anything. I believe that helps all around, but help cannot help us as much as we ask for it because we have free choice. That's why we're here. Right. Right. So during the session, we invite this guidance to join us. And it does as if the client were, in fact, channeling that guidance. Right. Plus, as you well know, um, it's easy to channel loved ones who passed on as well as past lives of clients, as I've described in earlier visits to Seek Reality. Um, And the guidance is eager to partner with us because they're here to help the client resolve these issues. Of course. So I'd like to share the notes from the session to share with you how we work things through. Um, And in fact, as I mentioned, it surprised me. Yeah. So I took... Uh, Robert into a relaxative trance, then a guided visualization up into the fifth dimension where all the answers can be found. Um, Now, even though he doesn't believe in this stuff, he can still be put into trance. Exactly. Trance is just simply focused concentration where you're fully aware of everything that's going on around you. You're the traffic outside. But hopefully you're sharing with me what's going on inside of you. Okay. Because I find that your soul speaks through your imagination in trance. So we just okay. invite that voice to come forth. Okay. So um, I then, once he was in trance, took him on a guided visualization up into the fifth dimension where all possibilities exist for us. Okay. Anywhere, anyhow, any why, any when. But as we were describing, uh, as he was describing to me what was happening, as he rose higher and higher up into the light, um, he said he felt like he was in outer space, far from Earth. Wow. Well, we invited his heart to come forth as if he were channeling it with words like, I'm here. I'm here, said Robert's heart. So I asked him, what does your heart look like or feel like or sound like to you? Because some of my clients are visual, some are auditory, some are sensing or feeling. And he said that his heart, he imagined his heart as a red heart right out in front of him. Perfect. So he continued to channel his heart as the session unfolded. But then at this point, he said to me that the dream he'd mentioned earlier had come to mind. In fact, he said, I'm in my dream now and I realize I can't get home. I'm stuck. As I'm rising up into space, there's something that's blocking my way. It's like there's a lid above me, preventing me from going even higher. Well, when we have blockages, we invite the blockage to come forth as if you were channeling it with words like, I'm here. Well, the blockage said, I'm here. So I asked, (laughs) are you a part of Robert or something else? And it replied, I'm an obstacle. Okay, well, who sent you to Robert? God sent me. But Robert doesn't believe in God, the blockage said, as Robert continued to channel this blockage energy. But then Robert said, this blockage is my dad's energy. So that was a surprise to me. So I asked Robert's dad what his purpose was in being inside his son's energy field. So dad, through Robert, replied, to keep Robert from succeeding, to punish him, 
I hate my son. As you recall, dad died a number of years before. I hate my son. That's so mean. Exactly. Why do you hate your son? I asked dad. Because I've always been jealous of him. Gee. Well, at this point, we invited Archangel Michael to join us. Because Archangel Michael's the go-to when I work with clients. He's the protector. And he's often helpful in recommending next steps for my client and me. So I asked him to channel Archangel, Ar- Archangel Michael's energy. And he said, he looks like Jesus. He's wearing robes. He's shining. He's glowing. He looks who's very glowing? powerful. Who's glowing? Archangel Michael. Oh, okay. So just to make sure, because it, he's simply channeling a voice. I hope it's Archangel Michael, but it could be any voice at all. So I asked this key question that I asked all of my clients when we're working with their wisdom. Are you in service to the light and love of the one infinite creator? Um, if it's not a, uh, a wisdom figure from the light, it cannot lie and say, I sure am. So I use this question to make sure we're talking to the true ascended masters or archangels or higher self. Right. The- so we now have Archangel Michael with us. What wants to happen next? And Archangel replied through Robert, we need to go around that lid, that energy blockage created by Robert's father. Oh, yeah. I asked Robert to imagine himself slowly moving around and beyond his dad's energy, rising up even higher and higher towards the fifth dimension. Robert then reported, I've now moved past my dad and can now look back at him. And he said, goodbye, you idiot. (laughs) (laughs) Then Robert said, I'm enjoying this. I'm now breathing more easily. The huge weight I've been carrying for far too long is now off my chest. Wow. This is wonderful. I'm feeling joy for the first time in such a long time. My goodness. So we guided Robert up into the fifth dimension and asked him to describe what does this place look like or feel like or seem like to him. And he said, I'm standing at the top of a beautiful, beautiful green hills above a village. I feel very happy being here. So now that we're up in the light, I asked him for his heart to join us once again. And heart said, I'm here. And then I watched as Robert placed his hand over his heart on this Zoom call and said, I love you. I asked his heart if he had a message for Robert. And that message was, we need to release dad's blocking energy from within you. So dad can no longer be an obstacle to your happiness. In fact, up until now, we were told his dad's energy had been keeping Robert in fear for far too long. Running him from making a strong connection with his heart and his soul. Oh, my gosh. So what wants to happen next? I asked his heart. So we need to release Robert's feelings of fear in his analytical mind left over from the trauma growing up with his dad. All right. So if, if we have to release those feelings of fear, where are they located in Robert's body? His heart told us his stomach, and his intestines. Okay. So I asked Robert to focus on that fear in his stomach and his intestines. My goodness. What color is that fear? Black. What's the shape of that fear? It's a fist. My gosh, it's my dad's fist. Oh, my goodness. It was so traumatic whenever my dad hit me. In fact, it was one of the worst experiences in my life. So I asked this question of Archangel Michael, who from this vibration in the fifth dimension can help Robert release all that fear energy from his body, from the trauma that Robert's still carrying in that body? And this this really surprised me, Roberto. His heart replied, a mafia guy. (laughs) (laughs) So I asked, all right. 
let's invite this mafia guy to join us from the light with words like, I'm here. My well, goodness, it's a, it's a whole drama play here. It really was. So I'm here, said the chan- channel, the mafia guy. <laughs> oh, so um, I asked the mafia guy. <laughs> <laughs> I asked the mafia guy, um, are you in service to the light and love of the one infinite creator? I would hope. To make sure he was from the light. Yes. Yes. I so, didn't know they had any of them like that in the light. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked the mafia guy, what wants to happen next? And the mafia guy replied, and I quote, I straighten out the wrongs in the world, unquote. Good of him. So he began to, to beat up Robert's father. <laughs> so Robert then reported that his dad fell to the floor with the mafia guy standing over him. Oh, my. Dad then said, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry for what I did to you, my son. So I asked him. <laughs> So I asked Robert how that felt to hear those words from his dad. And he replied, I feel good. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> so we then asked the angels of the white light to take the fear and pain caused by dad's energy out of Robert and set oh. it in the light. Oh. And- why? Setting Robert free of the black fear in the shape of a fist oh. that had been with him since childhood. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my goodness. Well, it's quite a story that was unfolding here. Well, I would say. So we then invited Robert's heart to come forth. And it said, and I quote, I'm happy because Robert's body is no longer feeling the fear and pain in his heart oh. by the trauma from growing up in that with his father. Oh. So I asked Robert, how does that feel? And he said, I'm feeling pretty cool. <laughs> yes. I'm basking in the light and the joy. Wow. So we asked, what should we focus on next, Hart? And his heart said, I want to show Robert how best to work in partnership with me, his heart. Okay, so tell us more. Wow. The heart went on to say, Robert, I can tell you how to be. You need to listen to me and not your analytical mind. Oh. So I can help you to be happy and feel free. My goodness. So I asked Robert, how does that feel to hear those words? And he replied, wow, what a trip. (laughs) So Robert's heart then told us that his heart is part of Robert's soul. And now that we've gotten rid of dad's energy blockage, that Robert can consciously connect and experience the purity of his true heart soul connection daily or whenever he chose. Wow. Well, on hearing this, Robert said, I'm about to cry with happiness. Oh, wow. So moving forward, his heart encouraged Robert to ask the heart to guide him in the future. In fact, his heart added, good parents teach their kids to love from their heart. And I was intrigued by this because in the midst of everything else, the heart is talking about what good parents do. (laughs) (laughs) Teach their kids to love from their heart. And that is so true. Of course it is. Of course. So then his heart added, pay attention to how your heart feels regarding whatever you are doing. Because if that activity does not bring you joy and happiness, don't keep doing it. I mean, that's such great advice. And it's coming directly from Robert's heart to Robert. Right. Of course. And Robert responded, I now have a whole new lease on my life. Of course. This is the answer I've been looking for. Of course. So I invited Robert to describe then a sanctuary in his imagination 
where he could go and reconnect with his heart energy daily or whenever he chose, you know, to connect, to spend time with his heart and talk with his heart, get guidance from his heart. Yes. So Robert then described his sanctuary as a patio in the back of his home with a fountain and a lovely view of the mountains nearby. So I asked him to go there right then and there in his imagination. And he saw himself sitting there in a wicker chair with cushions. And then he added, there's a statue of Buddha on the table there. (laughs) So we asked his heart to rejoin him then in his imagination in his new sanctuary with words like, I'm here. And I asked him, how does that feel? And his heart went on to tell him that the Buddha is a reminder to him to focus attention on his heart. And the heart then told Robert that the more he meets regularly in his sanctuary with his heart, the more guidance and answers he can get from his heart and soul about next steps on his soul's journey. And the happier he will be. So as a result of the session, I sent him a a connection, a link to my higher self shortcut, which is designed to take Robert into trance and up into the light and then up in the light to be there in his imagination, in his sanctuary, or to go up to the back of his house and sit there in that actual place and invite his heart to join him and commune with his heart, asking questions and getting answers daily or whenever he chooses about next steps in his life. I invite this to I have this use this higher self shortcut with all my clients, inviting them to continue this conversation with those parts of him who came from the light to work with us to help the client resolve these issues. Right. So we got together. Oh, um, oh, so as the session drew to a close, I asked Robert's heart, how do we help Robert doing our session today? And this is what his heart responded with. We showed Robert that his heart and soul exist. We got rid of dad's negative energy. In fact, Robert said at this point, I'm finally free of dad. And we integrated Robert's heart and soul into his life today. So then I asked a question of Robert's heart. What is your message for Robert from his heart? And this is what his heart said to him. Don't lose what you receive today. You now have a place to go to meet with your heart and get the answers you've been looking for. If you do not follow those answers, your dad will rise from the dead and haunt you again. Oh, good grief. Robert, you now control your ability to succeed by focusing on your heart and soul and the happiness and joy in your life. Right. So as a result... My client's heart and soul could now fill Robert with the happiness, joy, and forgiveness that he'd been missing for so uh, for so far long into his life. Yeah. So we got together a week later for our follow-up session where we talk about the session. And I ask, you no, know, I review the goals that we set. And I turn to the client and say, what shifted? What hasn't? What have you been thinking about? Any shifts or changes, um, any synchronicities. I then go through my notes, taking the client step by step through the session, describing what I was doing and why, and underscoring the wisdom that came through during the session, because changes begin immediately right after the session. But I want to wait a week for things to really fall into place before we get together and talk about what occurred. So during the follow up session, Robert reported that he was a different person since the earlier session. Yeah. And he said the anger, the tension, the anxiety, and the discomfort that he'd been feeling had vanished. He'd not realized that his father's negative energy had been living inside and affecting Robert's analytical self for years. Clearly, yes. And his analytical self filled with fear had been in control of Robert's thinking process. Not his heart. So Robert, uh, so this was causing Robert to be unhappy throughout his life. 
But now, as a direct result from our session, Robert's day-to-day life was dramatically improved. So he was feeling good about the session. I was feeling great about the session as well. And then, to my surprise, several weeks went by, and I received an email update from Robert regarding our session. And here's what he wrote. I just wanted to let you know that our session has stayed with me. I'm living a new life and accomplishing so many things involving relationships getting better than previously. I'm so content with my life at this time, enjoying what I've missed for so many years. Thanks again, Peter, for all your help. So as I mentioned at the beginning of today's conversation, Robert gave me permission to share what happened during our hypnotherapy session. And I'm delighted to have shared that with you, Roberta, and your listeners and viewers. Yeah, so wow. questions, Roberta, from you about what we did and what occurred. No, I, the- I, I think it's very clear. You, you were able to lead him in to where the problems were. He was able to find the problems and root them out <laughs> and get the mafia to beat up his father. I love it. Oh, my. And, and it's it's all done from the, the, the guidance coming through him. And we right. were bring with that guidance that knew exactly where we needed to go. Right. Wow. Quite amazing. Amazing. Quite, quite pleased by that. But over and over again, when you've told these stories, that's what happens. It all the always the guidance comes from within, and always they can zero right in on what the issue is. And it's loving, it's supportive, it's very filled with wisdom. Yeah, and it it's empowers a- the client to take back their power. Yes, that's exact. Well, so well said. Exactly, exactly. And for any interlopers along the way, we are. We are being led by that guidance to get rid of them or uh, negative emotions or go back to the cause or source, whether it's this life or past life or somewhere else. So amazing. Truly is amazing. Get out of the way. (laughs) And allow. This works so well. Because, Because the solutions are always inside. We don't have the perspective to find them inside ourselves. But with your guidance, people can find those solutions. They're inside always. It's amazing. It's amazing. I I just can't get over it. It really is it is incredible. Although it does it shouldn't be incredible because they we 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 tends to we tend to push them inside. We're we can't face them ourselves. We can't face them without help. We have no perspective on our own problems, really. And we're locked in the third dimension, where it's very difficult to move through some of these issues because it's our reality. I recently came upon a quote from from um, Albert Einstein, who talked about how being at a higher vibration, higher dimension, looking down, it's much easier to resolve these issues. So mm-hmm. with what we're doing here, we're taking them from the third dimension up into the fifth dimension where all possibilities exist for us. We can go anywhere, anyhow, any why, any when. And by bringing the guidance in with their wisdom, their knowledge about your soul's journey, they're eager to report for duty <laughs> and partner with us. Eager. Eager is clear. It's all about love. It's all about forgiveness. It's all about compassion. It's all about helping each other. As you well know. When people come to you with their problems, are they often skeptical? Well, I know you've helped other people, but my problem is surely going to be something you can't touch because it's a unique kind of problem. It's And so that's why I spend... Um, a free consultation, 30, 45 minutes or so with clients talking about the issues and then talking about the the resources we can bring to bear with hypnosis, with their guidance, with those from the light and um, helping them, whether it's this life, a past life or someplace somewhere else to resolve these issues. But don't they still say, I'm sure you can't help this. This is if you're that's why I spend so much time up front for free, because if you're open to it, yes. If you're not open to it with your arms crossing, I'm not going to be hypnotized. I'm not going to be hypnotized. 
You're right. <laughs> Which hear you say you're right, right? It's all hypnosis is self hypnosis. You're in charge. I'm here to hold the space, make it easy for you to go there. But I can't fly this plane alone. <laughs> but the first time I saw you, I was sure I couldn't be hypnoti- hypnotized. This was just I could, and yet you, it's happened so easily. It was like <laughs> I was totally out. And I sent all my clients after they book a session a my. Hypnotic induction is eight minutes long. My voice, hypnotic music, takes you into trance and brings you out. And as I uh, joke with them, the music is guaranteed to take you into hypnosis. Do not disappoint the music. (laughs) Have fun with it. Just basically relax, 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 relax. Well, it really, it was surprising to me. I really thought I couldn't be hypnotized. It's really funny. (laughs) You really think you can't, but it turns out you can pretty easily. Just enjoy, just get out of the way and trust and be my tour guide. Be my court reporter, because if at any point you feel anxious or fearful, tell me, we'll bring in Archangel Michael and others from the light. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is surprising how easily it works. Your soul speaks through your imagination, and your soul is not making things up. It's simply translating what's inside of you into first thought, first feeling, first image, first voice. So yeah. it's my tour guide. Yeah. Um, uh, you, you, you can't be trying to second guess what's going on, because if you do, then... It doesn't work either because you're trying to get in the way of what the guides are trying honestly to bring forth, and then and that doesn't work either. You're 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 you're, you're trying to be analytical when you should be just transmitting. Heartbeat. Yes, what's yes. going on directly? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it, it's quite amazing what you do. It really is quite and- straightforward stuff. The opportunity, if it's something that happened in a past life or through the lineage, through your own lineage, we can invite um, those from the light to let us know which it is. Is it past life or is it from the lineage? Archangel Michael will tell us or Kuan Yin, uh, the uh, Bodhisattva of Compassion. I work with her. Uh, She heads up the Karma Council and we can turn to the Karma Council for grace and let us know. Is this from the lineage or past life? And if so, what wants to happen to resolve it? And often it's a divine decree of forgiveness where the client invites everybody who was involved from that life and this life or everyone from the lineage on down, on back, whatever. And the client in front of them expresses a divine decree of forgiveness that basically says, I forgive everybody and everybody forgives everybody else. And I'll ask them the client what just occurred after this is said. I give the client word for word what what to say. And the client will turn will turn to me and say, Oh my gosh, everybody's smiling. A weight has been lifted off my shoulders. I feel so much better now. Yeah. And in fact, in the follow-up session, things have shifted, things have changed because of that. Right. So- we, we we tend to take this life so seriously and really there's nothing serious about it at all it's it's a way i as we've talked about before from my perspective earth is a free will zone right earth the practice making choices there are many other places we can go but we choose earth right there are no wrong choices they're just choices with consequences right Right. (laughs) Lifetime. And that's what we need, all those lifetimes, to make all those choices to help our souls evolve. Right. So it's quite intriguing how it all fits together. It is, it is so hard for us to develop any perspective on our own lives. Our own lives are so serious to us. I, I get emails constantly from people. And they they just they're so serious about their own lives, and and they they don't. Um, I mean, I, I'm so compassionate for them, and they don't see how if they could only get out of their own way a little bit, mm-hmm. they could 
do almost do for themselves what you're doing for them. They could develop a little bit of perspective and realize that they could make one or two little changes in the choices they have made. So many things would get would be different. And so, and I even say that to them, you know, maybe, 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 maybe make one or two different choices and things would get much better. And, and, and I, that happened just this morning. And, and I didn't even say which choices to make differently, but I got an email back saying, oh, thank you so much with a heart. <laughs> and I hadn't said anything except, Maybe if you made some different choices, it would get much better. That's all I had said. But but it's true. People get mired in in their ideas, and their ideas maybe weren't the best ideas to have in that particular situation. And they get mired in the drama. And yes. step away from the car, go into your heart, go into a place of forgiveness, of compassion, yes. because we're all doing the best we could do in that moment. Otherwise, we would have done something different in that moment. So forgive everybody and yourself. Yes, yes. It's 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 just it's very it's very hard. Um, but I I think that what you're doing is really wonderful because um, I it's I mean I wish Thomas would let me go to you with some things that I would like to come to you with, but he he really doesn't. He won't let me be regressed because. Well, I don't know why he's very bossy. Sorry, dear, but he really is. But but um, we we had one wonderful session. You and I. I was trying to um, get some perspective on some things that he and I were having some issues about. Thomas is my. For those who don't know, Thomas is my spirit guide, and we've had seventeen lifetimes together. He and I. And um, but you had a great suggestion. You said, "Well, why don't we just invite?" all those lifetimes into one room. I didn't know you could do this. That's kind of neat. But you did. You invited all those lifetimes into one room. And it was all men. And just knowing that they were all male somehow gave me some perspective on some issues he and I were having. And that was really good. Yeah. And so I said, okay, so they're all men. So I'm stuck with the fact that I've always been male. And so that gave me some insights on the relationships that he and I were having. Because he He's sort of bullying-ish with me, and I get that. He treats me, he doesn't treat me like a female because he thinks of me as male because I've always been male when we were in male, when we were together in lifetimes, both in body, I was always a male. So he sort of treats me like a male, and I get it. I get it. That's how he thinks of me. So, okay, I get that. And... um Boy, lifetimes are complicated. Relationships are very complicated. And and that's what you deal with, really, in all of this work you do. You deal with relationships. Well, I'm, I'm inviting my clients to think about this as being part of a Shakespearean acting company. The acting company are all <laughs> actors. And we're now that's in true. a production of Hamlet. And you are Hamlet. And life is falling apart all around you. That's um, true. That's true. That's true. The the, uh, the climax comes. The cl- curtain comes down to thundering applause, and you shake hands with your fellow actor, saying, "Great job!" <laughs> tomorrow so night, true. it's going to the Midsummer Night's Dream. <laughs> same same it's actors. It's all a play. It's all, a play. all the actors. That's so true. That's true. Yeah. Yes. So play your part, but uh, be filled with compassion, love, and forgiveness for you and oh, others. Others, exactly <laughs> right. So true. Right. Life is all a dream. Life is all a play. That's so true. And everybody is just doing their best. And sometimes their best isn't that good, you have to admit. But I, I find with those who have the evil stepmother. Those who, you know, where, where things really do go wrong in their life, often it's because in a past life you had that role yourself. And what goes around comes around. So see yeah, that okay. perspective and what is the lesson you have to learn from what just occurred? Yeah, okay, okay. 
And I, I joke with my clients saying that uh, from my perspective, um, there's a huge, huge flaw in humanity, a huge flaw, which is we're not in charge of other people. We should be, but we're not. It would be great if we could be right? we're in charge of ourselves. So. Right, right, right. Oh, so true. Right. We're really not in charge of other people. That's true. But yeah, in charge of yourself. And but, but right, but right, and and sometimes people really. But I. But what seems to be the case is very often people don't have a perspective on the how they are treating other people until after they get home, and then they're very remorseful very often, of 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 how they've treated other people. But they don't. There's nothing they can do about it now. And and um, my father was that way. He was very remorseful of the way he had treated his family, but there was nothing he could do about it. For 20 years, he was remorseful in expressing it. Um, and yet I find with working with past lives that we have, we, as I mentioned earlier, we, we come to Earth to make these choices, but we need every possible experience in physical body with the, the negative, positive motions, et cetera, for us to learn, for us to, to create wisdom for ourselves. Right, right. And that's why we we come keep coming back, but hopefully we get better and better each time, uh, yeah. lifetime after lifetime, so that we can eventually stop coming back to Earth and go elsewhere on our soul's journey to higher levels. But having, but having compassion, even for the people who don't seem to deserve the compassion, is something we really need to strive to do. Yes, yes. Because in a sense, they are all versions of ourselves in some way. And and um, I, I, I think that's one of the things I've learned from all the stories you've had to tell. Some of them have been amazing stories and in in really trying to show compassion, feel compassion for all those people. Hard to show com and feel compassion for the father in that particular story, I must say. He he didn't deserve a lot of it, but but still, um, showing and feeling compassion is something we really need to strive to do. And it could be that in a past life the roles were reversed. So that's what goes around comes around. <laughs> you know? right, so, right. It's all part of the drama. It's all part of the, the play, if you will. So Well, we're coming near the end of our time. So what what do you want people to take away from our conversation today, Peter? To forgive yourself, love yourself, let all those cares and worries that are sort of niggling at you be, be the best, allow the best part of you to come forth, because that's the true you. And when you are in your true self, then you can act from authenticity and act from a place of love, hopefully compassion and forgiveness for everybody and for yourself. And for yourself, especially sometimes it's necessary for yourself, too. Oh, that's so true, sweetie. Well, it's so lovely to see you, my dear. Always, always so good to see you. We'll have you back again soon. Wonderful to see you, my dear. Thank you. Always and, a ever, and and of course, insights from within dot com. And do you have a do you have any other website than that? No, I have that. I have that website, and I'm up, updating my website. The new website will be up and going within a couple of weeks. So with right. um, wonderful. With so my, That's how we find Peter. And um, I strongly recommend Peter. I've heard from so many people who have needed. They've had, it's surprising the number of things that Peter can help with. I've been amazed. But I've heard from so many people who have, are Seek Reality listeners and, and viewers at this point. And they've all, they've all raved about the, the things he can fix. So I really recommend if you have an issue, he's a good person to talk to. And it's by Zoom or phone or Skype or in person. So all possibilities exist. <laughs> Wonderful, dear. <laughs> Big you. hug, my love. And and once again, everyone, my beloved friends, we've come to the end of our time together. This has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. I'm so happy you could be with us today. And please never forget that you are a powerful, eternal being. You never began, you never will end. And when you get that, it change it changes everything in your life for the better. Next week, we'll be talking with Miter Michael Peter. I think it's Langevin. I think that's how we say it. And he's here for the second time to talk further about travel tales from unknown realities. He's here by rave request. 
because the last time he was with us, he talked about some really weird things. And many people said, hey, you got to have that guy back because he's lovely, he's sweet, he's engaging, and he's spooky as all get out. And people loved they were kind of freaked out by him, but they loved having him here. So he'll be here for the second time and really by popular demand. So please be here. Be sure to join us here next week. And this week, our lovely friend Peter Wright has been with us for the 19th time. Peter is a wonderful friend of ours. He's been, as you see, you see, he's been here many times, almost from, I think, our beginning. He's been kind of our past life regression, go-to therapist. He's a seek reality favorite just because he can solve so many problems for people. And and um, he, he's a friend of mine. He's somebody that um, I he's kind of one of my personal favorite people. And he's worked with so many people who are seek reality listeners and help them that um, I, I can recommend him without reservation. And now, of course, it's time once again to mention that Seek Reality Online is your one-stop resource for all things afterlife. You are an eternal being, whether you like it or not. So you may as well start now to, to really learn that your life is eternal, your life is beautiful, it's wonderful. And Craig Hogan is your go-to expert, expert for all things eternal. And teachingsbyjesus.com is your single resource for all the beautiful divine truths that are brought to us in perfect love by the greatest teacher of them all, Master Jesus. He didn't start Christianity, but as Christianity, the religion finally bites the dust. Which And it was created, as you know, by the Roman Emperor Constantine, who uses Jesus' name without permission. But as the religion dies... What Jesus originally taught, which was his way, finally can come alive. So you finally can begin to learn from the greatest teacher of them all. Teachingsbyjesus.com is his website. It was designed to his specifications. You can learn from him there. Also, as you know by now, there are many nonfiction books, which are my books. Most of them were either channeled by Jesus or are approved by him. And the fun of loving Jesus, embracing the Christianity that Jesus taught teaches his way. For young children, there's the fun of meeting Jesus, and you can order all these books through bookstores or on Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com. All the book, adult books, except for the last, are also available as audiobooks. If you want to talk about anything at all, you can always go to the green contact block on RobertaGrimes.com, send me an email. I answer every email, but if I don't have your right email address, my emails bounce, and that makes me really sad. You don't like me to be sad, so please give me your correct address. And all of the more than 500 past episodes of Seek Reality are available wherever audio podcasts can be found. You can listen to new audio episodes each week with the Seek Reality app, that you can find wherever free apps are available, and you can see the new audio episodes each week on Roku or Fire Stick, YouTube, and elsewhere. Meanwhile, this has been... Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Please enjoy, please make the most of this coming week in our one reality, always knowing that you are a powerful, eternal being, and you most of all in this whole universe. You are infinitely, powerfully, and eternally loved. You've been listening to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Roberta blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Join us every week as we explore what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about the one reality we all share. Knowing the truth changes everything.